Does the RAM you choose actually make a difference for gaming? With prices of RAM fluctuating between the die type, it can be hard to understand what you could be missing out on. For most people, XMP is more than enough, but it's important to remember the timings on the XMP profiles to see if the RAM is decent in the first place. I want to preface this that all tests will be done with rebar disabled, DLSS will be disabled, and all benchmarks will be done at 1080p. There will be 6 games benchmarked, and unfortunately, I don't have any synthetic benchmarks for this video. Let's see the build I will be testing today. We have a 3700X stock and an RTX 3070 stock. All the other specs will be in the description. I've since changed from the 3700X to the 5600, which I will do a follow-up video to see if we have something similar in the future. Today, I'm going to be using two different kits of DDR4 memory to test. The first is a 32 gig kit of two DIMMs, so 16 times 2 of G skill trident ram with its xmp profile at 3200 cl16 and the overclocked or tune profile at 3433 which is the best i could get it at the other kit is a 32 gig kit of four dims so 8x4 of patriot viper samsung b die but unfortunately both of its xmp profiles at 3800 and 4000 do not work on the 3700x so i tried my own profile at 3600 which works quite well with this build so we have to compare the 3200 XMP on G skill, 3433 overclocked on G skill, and 3600 overclocked on the Patriot Viper Samsung B die. For the RAM settings, there aren't too many changes on the 3200 profile on G skill. It will be set on XMP with the timings here being CL16 at 1.35 volts, and you can see the rest of the timings on the screen. For the 3433 profile on the G skill RAM, I only have the primary timings change with gear down mode on and command rate at 1T. The voltage was at 1.38 volts and I haven't changed too much here. On the Patriot Viper Samsung b die kit I had the voltage at 1.42 volts for CL16 with only some sub timings change. Gear down mode had to be on for the 3700X as it didn't want to play nice with the RAM still with the b die kit. Command rate was set at 1T as well and you can see the timings on the screen. Not too many changes, but let's see what happens with these RAM settings. Let's start with the first game, Assassin's Creed Valhalla at Ultra settings. The Patriot Viper 3600 performs the best with an average of 807 and 77 FPS and the 1% lows being 56.93. The 3433 isn't trailing too far behind with slightly better 1% lows. What is quite obvious is that both the 3433 and the 3600 have much improved 1% lows with the 3433 1% lows having a 68% increase compared to the 3200, which should help in the overall smoothness of the game. Cyberpunk 2077 is up next with a similar result for almost all of the RAM profiles. 3433 was faster than 3200 on average by 2% and 3600 was faster than 3433 by 2% on average as well. What is odd was the 1% lows on the 3600 being significantly lower than the 3433 and 3200 profiles. The 3600 1% lows were 39% slower than the 3200 profile, which may require some retesting with the 3600 profile to see why this has happened. 3433 has won this one overall in terms of 1% lows and the average FPS. I've got Hogwarts Legacy on high settings and Hogwarts Legacy does seem to benefit from the 3600 profile for the higher speeds if not the better latency. At 71.3 FPS on average for 3600 and the next highest being 3200 at 65.2, the 3600 profile is 9% faster overall on average FPS compared to the 3200. It's interesting how the average FPS of the 3433 is 2% slower compared to the 3200, but it's within such a small margin of error it could just be up to chance. 1% lows uplift on the 3600 is only about 6 FPS from the 3433 and 3200 if we round all of the numbers, which is okay, but would have been nice to try and smooth out this game 
which is usually a bit stuttery on the RTX 3070 for me. On Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, there is decent uplift on both 3433 and 3600 compared to 3200. Both 3433 and 3600 have almost identical average FPS values, with 3433 beating 3600 by just 0.4 FPS. The 1% lows were a nice increase, and comparing 3600 at 52.63 FPS to 30. 200 at 36.3, there was a 45% increase in performance, which is really nice for the 1% lows. Next up is Valorant being one of our esports titles. Just a quick note, for this video I used Spike Rush, and for a previous video for benchmarking my RTX 3070, I also used Spike Rush. But this is not very good, as there are cuts between when you change rounds. So after this video, I will only be using Deathmatch which won't have this issue but for this video I will be using Spike Rush. In any case, you can see significant uplift in performance from changing to each RAM speed, with 3600 being the best at 262.5 FPS on average compared to 191.5 on average for 3200, which makes the 3600 profile 37% faster. 1% lows had an increase of 26% from 3200 to 3433, in 1% lows FPS, and a 9% increase from 3433 to the 3600 profile, which is pretty decent. We could make the assumption here that since Valorant is a CPU bound game, better RAM or RAM profiles should uplift performance. Lastly, we have our last esports title being League of Legends. Just a quick note for League, the 3600 benchmark is only average on 2 games, with the others on 3, so please keep this in mind. I only realized this after I removed the CPU from the system, so I'm so sorry. For League of Legends, the average FPS has increased from 206.8 on 3433 to 255.5 on 3600, which is an increase of 24%, which isn't too bad. 1% lows had a nice uplift from the previous 114.73 on 3433 and 110.57 FPS on 3200. This is compared to the 161.05 on the 3600, which is quite a nice improvement in the 1% lows and can help in big fights when I was playing League of Legends on ARAM. Again, we see something similar to Valorant with game performance scaling up with faster or better tuned RAM profiles. Now let's head over to the overall differences for average FPS. For 3433 versus 3200, we find that the 3433 was 15.6% faster on average compared to the 3200 profile for these 6 games. The only outliers here are Hogwarts Legacy, being only slightly better for the 3200, and Cyberpunk 2077 as well only being 2% better for the 3433. The rest of the games had a decent improvement, with Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart being the highest at 24% for 3433. Now to the G Skill 3433 overclocked profile versus the Patriot Viper Samsung B Die 3600 overclocked profile. 3600 had performed about 16% faster than 3433 on these six games, and with two outliers being Cyberpunk 2077 at only a 2% difference, and Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart being 1% better for the 3433. An observation that can be made is that CPU bound games such as Valorant or League of Legends might have a correlation between RAM speed or tuning and better overall performance. However, I cannot completely confirm this as they are only two eSport titles here that have particularly CPU bound performance. Between the three, 3433 was a great option as it had tighter timings overall compared to 3200. 3600 was also an improvement in some titles, but I did have to buy new RAM being the Patriot Viper kit to achieve the performance uplift. 
What are my final thoughts? I can probably make a case here that trying to optimize your RAM might actually have a benefit depending on your CPU. My 3700X is very picky and was hard to get right for RAM overclocks on both the 3433 profile and even the Samsung B Dai one as well. The primary timings are easier to Tyson, but some of the benefit from RAM overclocking might actually come from the secondary and tertiary timings, which is more difficult to work would for the first time. For people trying to get the absolute best out of their systems, it would be beneficial to find RAM that is easier to work with such as Micron Rev E or Samsung B Dai on an AM4 system for example. Even trying to pick a kit of RAM with a decent overall clock speed as well as lower latency on XMP may help performance. On the flip side, I understand that overclocking memory is really not for everyone and is quite a rabbit hole of information to decipher on your own. I understand that memory tuning feels sometimes more of an art compared to a complete science. If you're on a budget, you will not get as much choice and you'll probably be forced to buy whatever you can for the cheapest or on the other side, compromising on better RAM for the best looking RGB RAM for example that you can find. Even so, from personal experience, especially in New Zealand, it's really difficult to find decent kits of RAM in the first place with Samsung B die being almost non-existent in New Zealand anymore. The best thing I can say is that if you're encountering issues with XMP and stuttering, Test Mem 5 is always there to try and test your XMP profile and hopefully if it wasn't working and it's under some sort of warranty you might be able to get a refund and try to return it but otherwise than that you can try overclock the memory on another boot disk with Test Mem 5 again so you don't corrupt any of your files but please keep in mind that different RAM chips have different tolerances for voltage and you can easily short in the life of your RAM if you push it too far or you don't have sufficient cooling. So please check your RAM IC's capabilities online before you try adding any voltage at all. So yes, having better RAM with higher clock speeds and more importantly, a profile with lower latencies for overall tighter timings can help for 1% lows and stutter in some games. Average FPS may go up depending on how CPU bound the game is, although it's not something too much to worry about if you already have the RAM installed in your PC. Please remember that these tests are true for this particular CPU being the 3700X on the AM4 platform and not all systems may behave in the same way. That about sums up the video, thank you for watching, check out ystech.org for some more awesome content. But other than that, stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you guys in the next video, bye!